everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort, Orphan Joker, only, only one. It's kind of a review, but it's more of just uh, how we feel about things and stuff. Yes. And you probably know from the thumbnail, but we are reviewing, going to be reviewing the uh, Batman Beyond Complete series. This video will only contain our thoughts and comments on season one. We did not want to go through and review every single episode because there's 13 in this season, 26 in 2, and 13 in season 3. That is a lot of videos to cover, so we're just going to do the seasons. Each season kind of has an end to it itself and a circle, so we yeah. wanted to review it because we didn't want to try to talk. We'd have It'd be way too long if we did all of them together because we also wanted to pause for the movie mm -hmm. that is inserted at the end of season three-ish. We'll have a yeah. review distinct. And then at the end of all of this, these three, these three or four episodes, we're gonna have a a like overall ranking of the seasons versus the movie, relations to that, and how we feel about the entire season. So we're not gonna specifically rank yeah. each season because it's Batman Beyond. You know, We're watching it because it's good, that's why we're watching it. And so we're just talking about season one, what's good, what's bad, what we like, what we don't like, how we felt when we were younger and watched it versus now because it's been a time and we haven't seen or remember every episode so all of that and beyond so let's get into it um obviously the first two episodes talk about batman being old that shows batman being old yeah and it kind of shows i didn't actually watch the very first episode so i i didn't before like i've not seen it before the two parters and so i knew about the story, but I, I wasn't really informed. Like, I didn't watch it. And people were like, oh yeah, Batman used a gun. And so I thought Batman actually shot somebody. Yeah, yeah, the intro yeah. is just... At, out of context, yeah. Yeah. Intro Batman uh, just you jumps in. You probably just happened to turn the TV on and then saw a random episode and was like, oh, this is cool. Oh, yes, very much. That's probably so. what happened. Yeah, and definitely the movie, too. Looking forward to the movie when it came out. The one watch movie it. they did. Yeah, the one movie. Hey, it only needs one movie. But... Uh, that aspect of Batman, Batman being this old guy, um, I like the way that we went to the story. We also watched this, the bonus features about the background, mm -hmm. something they didn't talk about. But I liked was the, they did talk about the aspect that Batman's old, he's still alive, you know, he's followed these bad guys, but Gotham's not any better, and you know, he's still like, what's his what's the end goal? He's still this old man living in a house all by himself with his dog, and this voice swoops in, he likes the boy, the boy kind of reminds him of himself, he gives the boy a chance, and, you know, takes the boy in as an intern. Mm -hmm. And much. something they, that, that's that's kind of the whole premise of this, and so it's just... It's like a year, yeah. it's, it's a, it's, this whole season is like year one Batman, but year one future Batman, pretty yeah. much. Things are different. In this, Batman is younger, he still has this, like, cool, dark Batman mode, but he does things differently. And so I really like that as it goes through, you get to see Batman learning. Batman has this new suit. And so uh, the, the young person in this, I can't remember his name. Terry McGinnis. Terry McGinnis. McGinnis. Well, he, he has his own stuff to deal with. Batman was older, and even when it goes to the others, it doesn't show Batman in real life. And so it gets yeah. to show Batman interacting. What I mean is Batman from a teenage perspective. Yeah, because he's 16 when he yeah. starts. And so he's still going to high school. He's got relationships, but he's doing this thing in kind of as an internship. Batman. And so he's, he doesn't know anything about Batman. This is a planet. <laughs> is this this is a time on on planet Earth, planet zero, whatever universe this is in, is that Batman? Universe. Yeah, people know about Batman, but you know, they're like, oh, Batman is Batman, and Batman's always been around, but at the same time. All the villains are different. At the time, at the time yeah. when Terry takes the mantle, like Batman's like a mythology legend that was, like, oh, the, he was a thing twenty years ago, but he's more of just yeah. like a uh, campfire story. Yeah. And, and so when he comes back, yeah. everyone's like, what the fuck? And so it's not just a new <laughs> Batman; it's also this idea that Batman, that he's being reintroduced into society. But at the same time, m Terry doesn't know anything really much about Batman. He's heard about Batman, he knows about Batman, but he's getting to learn the history of Batman as he's talking with Batman. Mm -hmm. You get to you get see old characters like Mr. Freeze, Bane, and eventually 
you know, later other characters, but you see these new characters, and you get to see the way society is branched from it. Oh, uh, the Joker gang? Yeah. Um, they're essentially basically a group of people who worship the Joker, even though the Joker is... I mean, at this point, you would no one really knows what happened to the Joker. They just know that he's nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. So that, at this point, they know that something happened to him. Yeah, so and if they've introduced old Batman people who have died, so this idea that, you know, there's no Penguin, there's no Batgirl, nobody talks about them being around. Um, I think the only two that they actually showed on screen that was still around was Freeze and Bane, because Bane was just an old man strapped to life support, and Freeze was... I, I wouldn't say resurrected, because he was still technically alive, because... They kind of gave him the fallout treatment, keeping his head in a cryogenic box, <laughs> essentially. Because <laughs> Freeze is pretty much alive as long as he stays sub-zero temperatures. But once he hits a certain temperature and goes higher, done. Done so. That's kind of this, this cycle, and that's the vibe that it, it gives off. But at the same time, that there is like a different aspect to it that... Um, it's it's when Batman was Batman, uh, even in the old series, it was just Batman. Yeah. And so you you don't really get. I mean, you get like Batman in the intros of Batman, but even the Batman Begins movie, um, you know, you get this intro to Batman stuff, but you don't get this slow Batman learning. And so yeah. you get to learn about Batman and everything that's happened since. So you learn along the same lines as Terry does. You get to learn well, who is Batman. You know. Batman is is talking about all his old stuff. There's a an episode where Batman's hearing voices, and mm -hmm. he explains. Yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. "I'm not." They kept calling me Bruce. You know, my name is Batman. And so, not only did you just get to interact with this 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 future aspect, that one of the things the writer said is it's not too futury. That's kind of nice. But this yeah. this future aspect that you know, it's still very relatable. Mm -hmm. And so you get to you get to learn. You know, at, you get to grow as this character grows in being Batman. He learns new gadgets. He does new things. You also get to see the old Batman, and he's like, you know, I may be old. I may be dumb. I mean, dumb as in lame. He's, he can't walk very fast to do a whole bunch of stuff. He's essentially the Alfred of the show now. <laughs> yes, but he's still got that, that Batman charm. Pretty much. Yeah, he's a like, Batman charm. He does. <laughs> he, he, he does, does he not? Like, that was one of the things that, like... Created through all of Batman, he's got this 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 Batman feel to him that makes Batman. So he didn't lose that despite being old. He's, he comes up with the the Terry in here is witty and cheesy, and and he makes jokes and and plays around with the different characters. If you've watched the movie, you see that he he's not just Batman. I'm Batman. Punch you. Tell me where he is. Like he like messes with his people and says weird things. And he's that very teenage like punk kind of vibe to him. Yeah, it's really nice. And so he brings that in, but then Batman brings in that. I'm an old man, and I'm wise, and so he ever do something, and, and he'll be like, Batman will be like, maybe you need to learn something, you, you young idiot. <laughs> and at the same time, he's like, wow, that girl. And he's like, and Batman's like, let me tell you about another girl. Yeah. That woman. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so he's got still got that, that Batman charm aspect, the thing that makes Batman Batman, despite being old. And it's just a refresh that he gets to teach these things to these kids slowly over time. And that he sees that in the kid, but you still get to see Batman in a new way. Yeah. Like, you um, want to talk about the different things that Batman has now in his suit that's changed since original Batman. Yeah, because there was one episode where, like, he got, like, really screwed up really bad. And, like, his suit started tearing up. But there was, like, an underlayer of, like, electronic, like, I don't know, I wouldn't say armor. I would say the... Suit itself is armor, like but it was, nanotech it was protecting, it was protecting the nanotech yeah. part that yeah. actually does all the stuff for him. So it's you like get a list. You get a list of the new stuff that's in the suit. Like there's two layers to it. Um, well, the batarangs are definitely different. They can pop out of his wrist pretty much. Um, they're fully circular. For me, yeah. I mean, they come out of the belt. They can pop. He pops out of his wrist. Uh, the invisibility slash camouflage is brand new. Oh, rocket boots. He can fly. Boost. He can actually fly. This yes. Batman can actually fly, which is totally different than, I mean, other Batmans like, like you know, kind of glide or whatever. But this Batman can actually fly, so he can get around quite easily. Um, the new uh, 
I'm, I'm just gonna call it the Batwing. The new Batwing is I like a lot. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it's like a combination of the new Batmobile and the Batwing because it can go on the roads, it can fly in the air. It's actually I like it a lot. It's a lot better than some other Bat wings I've seen in my time. But we're not, I don't want to get too much into the other stuff. <laughs> uh, the society is really cool. There's it's still got that that dark vibe to it that Gotham has, but it's a very futuristic, techy. But it's not too techy. I mean, obviously, there's things about it that, that we don't do today, like the back computer still shoots up pieces of paper with information on it. Um, cars still drive on the ground. I would is, say that the back cool. computer is still kind of old school. It's just, it's just because that's just Bruce. Just not, I mean, yeah, he likes to advance his technology and everything, but I feel like at the point, at, at the age of his life but, and whatnot, and since he wasn't Batman for 20 plus years, he just didn't really upgrade anything, but it's still so far, far like high tech and highly advanced that he doesn't really need to. So it's like it's well, they still, went into the future. It's is what I mean. Is they went into the future, didn't go too far. We obviously have thumb drives instead of little discs. Um, the floppy disk. I, mean, I want to say I want to say the floppy disk was just futuristic at the time when yeah, it came I'm out saying, because they were still yeah, a thing what, back then. What there's there was quite a few things. So what are some things that's, that's in this that didn't happen? Obviously there's a gamma radiation, all these crazy ways to make villains, which at first I was like, man, that's kinda weird, but that's original Batman. There's weird things that even Batman supposed to be in present time doesn't make any sense. I think the only episode that like you I mean, most of the time you're just goofing around and being tooting fuckery and whatnot. The only episode that you were kinda like, huh this actually makes sense. Was the Shriek episode with the set with the uh, the sound vibration yeah, guy? Right. That was the only one that you were like, "We're not talking about oh. science." There's no science. I know there's no science. I know there's no science in everything. Cut, cut, cut this out, man. No science. I I'm just I'm just wanting to point out the Shriek episode because that was one that yeah. I remember liking a lot, and I was just like, I don't know why I like it. Probably because the villain looks kind of cool. It was the was only. Just, I I got into it because the villain was the only character that didn't have some sort of like radiation or weird thing like there's an episode where a kid gets like telekinesis with a robot which would be confusing you know it's, it's a cartoon it's supposed <laughs> to be but your brain doesn't just magically turn into gam- gamma no science aspect of society is that it's futuristic but it's not too futuristic the writers explain that um, in their little side extra video but it still has that future vibe to it that it could be one day and so even though we're only four years away from you know when this is supposed to be taking place, it's not like other things where it's way too futuristic. Mm-hmm. People still wear regular clothes. That might be a little different style, but there's there's things like floating games, like in, in zero gravity, cars kind of hover in some aspects and stuff, but it's not too... High schoolers are able to go to actual clubs without having to get ID'd. Yeah, maybe it's a non, <laughs> non, non-alcohol clubs, or maybe they lowered the alcohol age. That's something we said. Um, Moving on to villains. Mike's going to take up on difference in villains and the cool things. About okay, so like. to go down the list of villains, I mean, we did talk about Freeze and Bane. They were kind of like quick little introdu- little mm-hmm. things here and there, except Freeze. Freeze, oh, had, Freeze had his whole own episode yeah. or whatever. Freeze gets reborn, so it's pretty much just Dr. Freeze. But the Bane episode's really cool because it, it talks about, like, the layer of Bane. Bane has taken all of this poison in his body that's, that's didn't help him yet and it's it's end up leaving him like the skeleton of a person this they definitely take darker vibes in each episode which each villain that it like there was obviously dark stuff in the old batman but this is like like you know batman may be this old dude in a house by himself but you know he's not a head floating in goo like a head in a in a cellar somewhere just people saving or like a skeleton being fed this stuff and having no personality or oh nothing God, at all, yeah. or being just completely dead, um, or no, their only legacy it. is you know teenagers running around spray painting stuff. So we're I, I want to kind of start like from here, like the first really big villain that introduces to us, and it's not Mister Fix, he's just there. Blight slash AKA Derek Powers, radioactive skeleton dude, the yop um. I, I, I want to say Blight was like the main villain in this story, even though he wasn't really talked about so much. And you're in the middle, like, but he kind of like is feeding some things in society and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, like, well, he was definitely the main villain. Yeah, because 
he, he's in the beginning. He's like not only taken over Wayne Industries. Wayne Enterprises and yeah. turned into Wayne Powers. But he's also, um, you know, he, he turns into this bad guy because the whole first episode he, he has this toxic thing that's, that he's trying to sell to bad people instead of just, you know, creating a good company. It's a nerve gas of like radiation poisoning. It literally disintegrates things. Mm-hmm. And he, from him there's others. He hires um, Ink. Yeah, to, there's to run the around. Ink She's had, in a couple episodes. Ink had her two on special yeah. episodes too. There's a the uh, Mike's really likes the episode with uh, the shock. Um, Sh- uh, Shriek? Shriek. 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 Yeah, Shriek. 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 He, he, he's like, I made this thing. It's supposed to be really cool. And Mr. Powers is like, let's use it for evil. And um, then like completely turns this guy over to the evil side. And then he gets such in trouble that he's like, oh, now you have to do a personal identity so you can be this extra bad guy. And it's like, yeah, bro, I, I feel just, like let him, just let him have his dreams of helping people and destroying stuff at the same time. So, like, okay, like, we kind of skimmed over Blight and everything, how he's the main villain. He's, like, the head honcho of the, the, the massive villains. Uh, Ink, um, Ink's pretty much uh, a mercenary for hire. That's all she is. And I don't, okay, I don't want to make the comparison because she's her own being. She, her origin which was skimmed over in like a couple of sentences uh she's i i thought about it and she's kind of like the same uh powers as clayface except his was from like a, a makeup thing yeah. hers was that chemical reaction that basically yeah. turned her into a, yeah. a blob not to get into too much science yeah aspect but older batman builds how these villains are different is Older Batman villains focused on craze, like they they became crazy mm-hmm. and led to crazy stuff, and were, their intentions were crazy. These guys are a little more sophisticated. There's actually a group called uh, Flush or the Cards. The Royal Flush Gang. Yeah, the Royal Flush Gang, and they're about a- anything. Yeah. That the, anything that they steal is related to the, a deck of cards yeah, or whatever. Cards. And so there's like this this aspect to them, but things are future techie, and so they're a, you know things happen because of gamma radiation or um, Chemical, chemical genetic or things. Yeah, their own sciencey, scenes. sciencey related things. You know, one guy's ability is to to blast stuff. There's another guy, and he used like mental manipulation and this eyeball technology to hypnotize people. I never really people. got that guy's yeah. like alias. I know it, I forget his name. The the hypno the hypno mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, they the just called him Swirly. <laughs> Swirly or whatever. They, they didn't even they care about actually having a name. It was just. He wasn't there for very long. But then yeah. everything has to do with technology in the future and that aspect. And so that's a different way to turn it to different villains. They do a really good job of still being relatable. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Batman's, Batman's old. He's dealing with old people stuff, which it, none of us are really old. I mean, there's old people out there. But, you know, this idea that, you know, they did a good job of, of, of keeping consistency mm-hmm. in Batman and not just saying, oh, Batman's old. Now he does nothing. He still does stuff. He gets to put on a suit for a little bit. He gets to give advice. He's still witty. Um, you know, he's still like, I'm Batman. Yeah. Um, you get to see his relationship with Barbara Gordon, who's mm-hmm. now, now the commissioner taking over for her father, who mm-hmm. assumingly have passed away. And so you get that dynamic, and you get to talk about the old past and how when you first get into the Batcave, it shows all of their suits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so all the uh, villain suits and everything, like the giant coin. Mm-hmm. I, I remember the episode of the giant coin and everything, and all the other, like, villains, like weapons and suits and everything. And I so, was talking. <laughs> and so it's 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 connected in all of this. And so it, you get to say, uh, one time Terry sits down with Barbara, and she's like, oh, you know, we all moved away, realized that Batman was getting too into it or whatever, and we went away. But you get that aspect, this new Batman, new life, new stuff, but it's still say it's a same old Batman. Mm-hmm. Same old Batman ideas and so it's it's a really interesting thing. Um, it's not just a throw together thing, it actually has some weight and some depth. Terry, uh, he's a normal teenager. Mike, how did you relate to normal Terry when he was a kid? When I was a kid? Um yeah. I what I okay, when I was a kid and I was watching the show, uh, I didn't really like look for any like trying to relate to any of the characters. When I was the one about Terry was cool. I was very. And you wanted to be a cool kid. It was just the Batman suit, the Batman Beyond. It was cool seeing a future Batman Beyond, honestly, when I was a kid. Uh, and of course, I couldn't gra- grasp the concept of like all the themes that they had in this series, like like I do now. 
and whatnot, which kind of makes me feel bad for a lot of the villains now. Like, granted, yeah, like Ink, like she makes me very uncomfortable and whatnot by the things she does. But like, just hearing like her origin story, how it was a freak accident, and also for the fact that like she has like three to four major weaknesses, it's like she has she got the shit end of the stick when it came to her well, life. An aspect that's in this Batman, and that's in this teenage Batman versus other teenage stuff. There's been Spider-Man throughout the series. There's there's several where they branch back to, to being a kid. They they have Teen Titans and other things. There's there's teen vibes. There, teen Titans kind of gives this teen vibe, but yeah, this one's completely different. Um, Terry McGinnis is still a teenager, but they give different teenage vibes, and so you get to see breakdowns like episode of the Bane, the Bane episode, you get to see other students uh, get into yeah, a drug addiction. Yeah, anti, anti-drug episode. Yeah, not much. just an anti-drug episode, but it was more than that. It was it was his breakdown of society. He struggles with school and sleeping because he stays as Batman, which is something you don't get to see. You get to see it briefly in certain yeah, Batman that's things, that's but like he's always tired. He he, It's messing with his relationship with a girl that he likes. Dana. Yeah, so it's messing with his school, Dana. I know in later episodes, it's him dealing with his little brother and this aspect, and so it's it's things you don't get in normal teen. Like, you know, it's, uh, I'm a teen, and, you know, I'm a teen superhero, and it kind of sucks. They actually get to, like, break it down into levels. Another thing I feel like that he's having a hard time, deep. like, coping, not coping, but, like, dealing with and whatnot, and I'm pretty sure Bruce mm-hmm. sat him down and told him, like, all the rules and whatnot, is the fact that, like, yeah, like, Mr. Fix ended up dying at the end of, like, the two-parter, like, plot, uh, pilot episode, but Batman didn't do it in, like, yeah. intentionally. No guns. Like, no he, didn't, he didn't physically actually kill him. It was, like, a, a freak accident, pretty mm-hmm. much. And also for the fact that, like, um, he kind of battles with, like, wanting to do something to blight or Derek Powers because th- he was the reason why his father got is dead and whatnot. But then, like, he kind of holds, like a, like, a vendetta or a grudge against him. So, like, that's, like, typical teenage stuff right there. So but it's like, also... And it's teenager. Yeah. But it's not drama, like, ew, drama. And, like, some other ones, they have... They put a little too extra much drama in it. This is drama, like, life drama. Like, he lost his dad. He has to move him with his mom. You know, he had problems with his dad at the beginning. And and so it goes a little deeper. Hopping into, from girl to girl on the well, same night. It, it, it goes deep into <laughs> yeah. more of a, like, a... Like a <laughs> like a teenage struggle and less like a teenage angst. Yeah. And so Mike's like, yeah, girl, girl. But seriously, it's in, there's an episode where he meets another girl and it's, he breaks up with this other girl, but he doesn't know how to deal with it. And so it's not just, you know, teenage zits and, and stuff, but it's, you know, the normal teenage layer they put in stuff. It's an actual, I'm a teenager and I'm smart, but I'm dealing with all this stuff. You see that in the episode where he's trying to, to get the little poison patches that Bane, the Bane people have so he can find out who has it. And so he's hes a teenager that's struggling, but he's not just struggling because emotions and girls and even though those those are in there, they're in there with like almost Also like with a, the responsibility of being the number one superhero yeah. in Gotham. Likes and dislikes. Like overall likes and dislikes. Uh, I think there was only two episodes that I was just kind of like, Really, they had to do that. Um, the first one that I kind of want to bring up that I didn't really have too many problems with, but I kind of just felt like it was just thrown in there, was the QR, Curare episode. Mm-hmm. The, I was just, I mean, like, random assassin shows up, has to kill this, uh, has to kill Barbara's husband, Sam, and, like, I'm just like, wait, what the? What the fuck? What, wait, what? Th- this was going on in the last episode, and all of a sudden, this is happening, and now we're back to the main storylines. Like, talk, yeah, talk, really, talk about this spinoff the of the League of Assassins. Well, it's the only, yeah, it, well, it, it's the only one that has to do with something that's not the main bad villain. Yeah, and I know but, that it's, it's, it's an episode pretty much introducing a new villain. I feel like it's, it was a one-off, too, because, I mean... Yeah, I don't think it's as much as the villain. I don't as think... I don't think... It was strategically placed... To get Barbara, Gordon, and Terry yeah, to get together. Her, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was funny because at first it's like, oh, it's a new Batman. And she knows it's not him, but she doesn't know who it is. And now it, it's funny because 
in Batman, in any of the Batman series, Batman doesn't like, unless it's like a Justice League stuff, that he doesn't just sit down and have coffee with somebody else who knows his identity and like blatantly talk about Batman. And so that casualness, the whole, that goes to the, he doesn't just learn from Batman. He learns from Barbara and eventually learns from other people mm -hmm. as well. And so you get to see that breakdown because society's still the same. Gotham's still the same. So Batman didn't achieve what he did. Maybe what he wanted, maybe he got a piece. There's, you know, normal drama in there, which is kind of crazy. There's not like, yeah. until um, Blight comes along, there's not huge explosions and bad guys. There's still goons and goobers and, and I don't know how to use those words, but there's still gangs. There's still people doing stuff, but it's not, like, crazy things. Another episode I want to touch on, I mean, this is not one I didn't hate. I just kind of came to mind, so I wanted to throw it out there. So I'll get to the episode that I was kind of like, oh, I didn't have to do this. But this episode is something completely different. Um, the the things behind the um, the golem the golem episode where the kid has a telekinetic connection with the golem and whatnot. Like I liked the themes in it because it was pretty much like trying to like kind of promote um, anti bullying or something like that and whatnot. Because like the kid was being bullied by the, the big the big jock from the high school and then he's essentially kind of getting bullied from his dad and whatnot. So, like, in the end, yeah, what the kid does is completely wrong, and him just kind of being blinded by rage and, like, depression and pretty much being viewed as an outcast, but it's like, you kind of feel for the kid, too. Yeah. Like, you also get, because Terry's in there with people, you get to see Terry as a human, not just Terry as a bad mm -hmm. man. And it's, not to get too, ooh, but I'm uh, still trying to, they get it very leveled. You get to see Terry actually cares about his other friends. Yeah. There, there, there's one where he, like, there's these goons and they're attacking this place and he comes to find out it's a guy that he knows from his favorite sports team, his local high school sports team. And so I was like, oh, that, it's the same kid. Yeah, it's going you back know? to the, the Slappers yeah. episode. When people were picking on the, the guy in the Golem episode, it, you know, Terry was like, oh, you know, care for him, you know, take you home, you know, trying to be nice. Stop making fun of him. He's been the yeah. The and kid's so, been like messed with so much. Yeah. He pretty much sh uh, shuts him out. Um, there's a moment which I hope they pull it into season two, where Barbara Gordon was saying, "Yo, um, you know, every, eventually Batman takes over, and then you know you stop. You know, Batman's going to take over. He's going to tell you what to do, not just Bruce Wayne, not this old guy who cares that yeah. Batman's going to get too much. It's going to get too much. And Terry having more of a lighter vibe." And just, just more of a, not a lucky, you know, like a, what, what, what am I saying? The uh, happy-go-lucky, but like an actual, like, he cares about the society, the society he grew up in. Mm -hmm. And so he, him wanting to change it versus um, other people being pulled in and having these really twisted villains, these other villains tend to have more of a struggle that's, uh, like, like relatable that you can yeah, connect to versus, you know, hi, I'm crazy, and I need to be thrown into an asylum. And so yeah. they, it, it makes the story deeper. Mm -hmm. People say that Joker and Penguin and, and Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are intelligent. They are, but some of the old cartoons don't, they don't play out there like multi-layered. The, the newer comics tend to pull out their multi-layered tactics, but in this, all the villains seem to be at least somewhat intelligent or tactile mm -hmm. in, in their ways of doing stuff, you know, from the beginning, th this, this idea. And so that's a cool, different way of doing stuff. It's not just, hey, bad guy, get some. Another aspect about Terry is when he's talking with Barbara Gordon, she says, you know, I know who you are. You know, there's a line in the sand. And Batman, Bruce Wayne, Batman was like, we're going to do this. And he's like, no, we don't cross that line. And so not that he's, you know, a manipulated young mind twisted by society to follow the rules. But he actually does understand a different aspect that it seems like Batman's not quite getting. That Batman, you know, has gotten to the, almost the point. He is what he is, but he's still the, you know, Gotham needs me yeah. kind of a thing. But he kind of sunk into being an old man, and so he's not completely, but maybe pushing a little bit of his dream onto this kid. And the kid goes, no, there are boundaries, there are aspects. I'm different than you, I'm going to do it my own way. And I feel like that might make for a better relationship than all the old people because he doesn't idolize Batman. He's just like, sup old man. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And so that's a different... And like, he's also Batman's learning lessons from, from Wayne as well yeah. and whatnot. Um, the touch base on probably the one episode that I kind of thought was just a complete ripoff was the 
terrific three episode. No, uh, it, it was basically it was fantastic one and a half. <laughs> it was basically an an entire revenge plot episode when you get to the very end of it, and I'm like, I mean, it was there was no need for that because obviously the Fantastic Four. It definitely had Fantastic Four. Vibes. I, I I did I did was, some I actually did some research on that episode, and while they were making it, they said that like there was actual another idea for this episode. I guess they had four people or whatever, but it got shut down because they they said to be too much like the Fantastic Four, which is why they just did the three, even though it still was like. Listen, <laughs> this is essentially the Fantastic Four without the fourth guy there, but. I don't know, like, I don't hate the episode, it's just, I would still say it's my, I mean, it's, well, that's the way of explaining it, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I don't hate it, but, it's, the it's, Fantastic Four is already a dark story, but you could go through, through all the, like, original Fantastic Four, not to get into a different other thing, but, and this one, it was very dark, and so that's the, what I meant by the whole teen thing that's different, it's, like, it's not just a teen, it's a dark teen, but it's not a dark, angsty teen yeah. struggle, it's like an actual dark life struggle thrown in from the perspective of a teenager who lives in this, who lives in Gotham. He lives in Gotham. He grew up in Gotham. He's heard about all the old bad guys, all the crazy stuff, and he's living it. You know, his dad is killed because of, of, of Mr. Pitts yeah, and well, corruption. Yeah, corruption. Corruption. And, and from the corruption, different things happen, which turns into this ultra bad guy. So even before there's a super big bad guy, or like magical powers, or telepathy, or anything that, it already shows life is hard and crazy in Gotham yeah. before you can get bad guys. Then you throw in bad guys, then you throw in new Batman. It's just it's just the right mix for a wonderful story. And so, I mean, season one. Just got, got stuff for stuffs. A lot of, uh, pretty much to summarize it all, it has a lot of good themes. Um, a lot of introductory for a lot of characters and whatnot. And essentially just a futuristic, uh, a futuristic version of year one Batman. Yeah. So it's new Batman, uh, new villains, new times, new story, and we're excited for season two. If you've liked this video, if you've reached all the way to the end here, be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe if, you, if you'd if you like to, share with your friends if you want to hear our thoughts about it and whatnot, if you want to come back, of course, of course come back and what, I'm screwing this up really bad. We, we're going to watch season two, so look for that video if you like this one. Yeah. Uh, we'll follow it. We're, it's season two and season three, and when we get around to it, at the very end, the movie and our roundup. Until then, um, and of course, we're not going to give a rating for this uh, season until we watch all three seasons, and we'll give a final overall rating, and we're going to say which one was our favorite, which one was our not least favorite. But this is Life Check 95, along with Orphan Joker, signing out.